Welcome to Truth and Company Boxing Podcast for a special edition show, the Contender Series Season 1 Reunion. That's right. For all you fans that have been waiting, 20 years almost exactly. These guys filmed this show back in 2004. It aired in 2005 from March until May. There were 16 boxers picked to be in a tournament. They fought each other. They lived in the same uh, houses. They were on two separate teams, the East Coast, the West Coast teams. Um, like I said, there were 16 boxers. Unfortunately, there's now only 14. Two passed away since the show first uh, was filmed. Um, that was actually uh, – I lost my train of thought here. Um, that was actually uh, Najee Turpin. Unfortunately, he took his own life before the, the show actually aired. And then in 2012, uh, Jeff uh, Fraza, or Fraza, however you say it, unfortunately, he was hit by a train. Uh, he was on his cell phone, and he passed away. And he was actually training for a comeback with Mickey Ward at the time. So um, we just want to acknowledge both of those guys before we bring the rest of the fighters on the show. They were a huge part of it. And we want to thank them for uh, their careers and for entertaining us when they did in the ring. But... Uh, like I said, um, if you haven't watched the show, if you're not familiar with the show, there was five seasons. Um, the first season, actually, right now, you can go back and watch on Amazon Prime if you want to catch up with these guys. Look them up on Box Rec, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Go watch their old fights on YouTube. I advise you to. All these guys were successful in their careers. Um, unfortunately, the winner of the show is not on today. Um, he could not make the show. He was on two weeks ago. We did a 20 random question segment with him. So you can go check out that podcast. That was Sergio Mora. Um, he, he went on to win a world title and he's actually on the zone network now as a commentator. Another gentleman we're going to be bringing on Ishe Smith. He actually went on to win a world title as well. He's actually on the show today. So I'm going to, um, give you guys a rundown of these guys and then I'm going to bring them on. Um, Juan Del Rosa. 24 wins, 4 losses, 1 draw. Anthony Basante, 34 wins, 13 losses, 3 draw. 3 draws. Anthony Brett Cooper, 20 wins, 6 losses, 2 draws. Peter Manfredo Jr., 42 wins, 7 losses, 1 draw. Jimmy Lang, 39 wins, 6 losses, 2 draws. Jonathan Reed, 35 wins, 19 losses. Ishe Smith, former world champion, 29 wins. 11 losses. Let me bring all these guys on here one at a time. Anthony Basante, Peter Manfredo Jr., Juan Del Rosa, Ishe Smith, Jimmy Lang, Jonathan Reed, Anthony Cooper. How's it guys go going, guys? 20 years since you guys all been together. How's it feel? Time great. flies, baby. Feels good, man. Feels great, man. Old. <laughs> I love all these guys and my brothers for life, no matter what. I'm in my side. <laughs> you liar, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what, uh, so what Don't be giving you, Jimmy a hard time. I, th I thought we, what do you say? I said, said, don't be don't giving Jimmy a hard time. No, don't give me a hard time. You know what will happen. I'll call the police. <laughs> For security. Let's go. What's the first question? So, basically, I was just texting with your special guest. I don't know if they're going to be able to make it or not, but uh, we're going we're gonna to just roll with it. So, first off, I think the fans want to know individually – how did you guys even find out about the contender? I know you guys got different stories on how you came on. So let me ask uh, Antonio or uh, Anthony Cooper first. How did you get involved in the contender? Uh, I was helping this kid get ready to fight at a local gym here in Nashville. And uh, his, uh, his trainers brought the producers over to look at him. And so they watched us both. They liked us. Asked us to come down to Tunica, Mississippi and audition. So I ended up going. The kid that they came for didn't go. So I went down there, and uh, Frank Stallone, Sylvester Stallone's brother, was down there. And I kind of hit it off with him. And they said, you know, do you do anything else? And I said, well, I'm, I'm a singer. 
And so I sang for them and, and, um, you know, then they narrowed it, narrowed it down to 16, 40 fighters flew us to California and, and when they made the final 16. And, and something I didn't bring up when I was talking about the show is actually Sylvester Stallone and former world champion Sugar Ray Leonard were the hosts on the show. And then you guys had a den mother, Jackie Callion, that was on the show as well. And she was a pro professional boxing manager and she's wore a lot of different hats in boxing. But uh, OK, so Tony Basante, tell me exactly how you got on the show. Uh, I was training at the Uppercut Gym with Lisa and Scott Ledoux, and they had mentioned it to me, and I thought there's no way in hell they're going to pick some dumb kid from Minnesota to be on a reality show. Flew me out there. Um, they told me to go around boxing, and I wasn't the best boxer by far. I mean, the best boxer there, in my opinion, was Ishe Smith, but once I boxed, I made it in the interview because I was a single dad raising two kids, they hopped onto that. I was working nights as a warehouse supervisor. And I think they rolled with the story rather than my boxing ability because it, it seemed to work for the contenders. So that's I think that's how I got on. All right, Peter, how did you get on? Uh, I was, I think I was driving one day and one night I was sleeping in bed and then Vinny Paz called me up and uh, he left a message on my phone saying that he knows Frank Stallone and this and that, and they're, they're doing a reality show, and they want you to come try out for it. And it was in Brockton, Massachusetts. And I uh, drove up to Brockton one day. I had to spot a couple of different guys, do a couple of interviews, send in tapes of how I was living with my family and all this bunch of stuff. And, you know, I guess I, I, I made the cut. Okay, Juan, how did you get on the show? Uh, trials in Dallas. My father told me about them. I just went because, I mean, I was 17. My dad told me to go, go ahead and try out. Sparked a couple guys there. Got invited to uh, California for the tryouts. Did it there. Had Stallone come to my room, and they told me I didn't make it because I was too young. They needed somebody 18. And then they turned the story around and said, you know, you're, you're, we're going to go ahead and wait for you. You're going to be on the show. And went from there. Okay. Jonathan, how did you get on the contender? Uh, I was uh, closing up at, at – uh, one of the gyms around here I was working at and uh, the phone rang and somebody on the phone had asked, was this a real boxing gym? And I sort of started laughing. I said, yeah, it's a real boxing gym. Why? And then they was telling me about the show. And I said, uh, well, I heard about it, but I, I thought that they were only uh, doing, doing it for amateurs. And the person on the phone said, no, it's for pros as well. And then they gave me the information to go try out at uh, in Tunica. So me and my strength coach drove to Tunica, and the rest is history. Okay, Jimmy Lang, how'd you get on the show? Uh, I was fighting in D.C., and I was just starting to get a, a, a really nice following. And uh, I, think, I think it was uh, – is that me? Who's that? Oh. Jimmy's getting uh, a call for another fight. No, that wasn't. No, I don't think that was my phone. Uh, so yeah, I was I was fighting Frank Stallone come to come to the fight, and uh, I got the ever living shit beat out of me that fight. And and the guy and they gave me the decision. Totally robbed the guy. I mean, I was beat to shit. And Stallone wanted to come in. They said, "Hey, Stallone wants to come back and see you." Uh, and I don't, this isn't like me, but I was like, I'm not seeing nobody, man. I'm fucking, I was embarrassed because of the, it was a robbery. I mean, my own fans were booing me. You know what I mean? It was, it was bad. And, uh, I just got a call. I mean, he, he didn't, I didn't meet up with him or nothing. I didn't even know about it. You know, a couple of weeks later, they called me. They said, go to New York. We went to a gym. I think it was called Trinity. And I did a, uh, I did an interview I remember hearing later that, that that Stallone's wife had some kind of an in, input into it, and and she really liked me because I was the only one that wore a suit. So wear a suit from now on, guys. Get on reality show. Eat alive. Okay, Ishe, how did you get on the show? Um, well, I was at that time. I think I was like one of the. I well, I had met Peter. But Peter probably was uh, 
was on his way to to being like he was a prospect and he was on his way to being a, a contender. I think uh, I was a little bit ahead of him because I had just fought uh, Randall Bailey um, and I had won all those belts, those minor belts, which which ranked me. I was ranked across the board in welterweight. But as Peter knows, fighting at that level, it was only set prices like ten thousand for Showbox main event, fifteen thousand for ESPN main event. So when you got a family, you're not making no money. So I mean, that ain't no money when you pay your team and you pay everybody. So I was going through um, prom promotional issues at that time because I'm like, either they're taking money from me or this just this ain't working. I shouldn't be broken. I just beat a former two time champion. So I was actually going through uh, trying to get away from my promoter and they called me and uh, I don't know how they got my number, but they had came to Vegas and they called me and they said, uh, we want you to uh, we want you to be a part of the contender. And I was like, I heard about that. That's a I was like, I, th I don't think you guys are looking for me. I was like, I'm way too advanced to be on some type of show like that. And they say, no, no, we want you to uh, come to California. And, and and interview and, and try out and, and we'll go from there we're looking for guys just like you but um i was still a little pessimistic about the optimistic about the whole thing so i went i went out there i never had to try out or do none of that i think when i sit back and think about it i think the two names they wanted to kind of legitimize the show was me and peter i think they they had already zoom uh, had arrowed air aer aired in on peter and I think if they had got me on the show, that would just kind of legitimize like, hey, we got real fighters on the show. So that kind of and that that what kind of like flipped the script, because when everybody announced the lineup, everybody thought, you know, hands down, I was going to win the show. But they didn't take into the uh, fact that me and Peter were already going 10 to 12 rounds. They didn't take in the fact the small rings. Um, the five round and then living with the guys and building that camaraderie. So I never had to try. My path was a little bit different than them, than those guys. But, you know, I wouldn't trade it in for the world, though. I had a good time. All right. So now that we all know and the fans know how you guys all travel to different road acts to get on the show. Um, somebody give me like your experience when you guys got on the show. Like Isha was just saying, he wasn't really sure what was going on. And then once you guys got there. I mean, everybody that have seen the show, you know, they, they try to turn a lot of drama into the show. They tried to turn some of you guys against each other, things like that. You guys saw that some of you guys bonded and things. But give me give me some experiences. Uh, I'll start with Peter. Give me – how was your experience overall on the show? Yeah, I mean, who, who's the question for everybody? No, no, Just Peter, I'm going yeah, to start with you. Oh no, my experience was great. I mean, like I said, it was first. At first, it was tough to live with these guys. I was already fighting twelve round fights. I mean, I just fought. I just fought Anthony Bontante, like I don't know, a couple of months before the show started when we went on the show. So uh, we just did twelve rounds. I I was an NABF champion. I was defending against him. Uh, I beat him a decision. So, you know, I just, just got done fighting. So we, we were all kind of close, you know. And um, well, then when I got on the show, uh, you know, it was hard then because I was, I, was I was all blown. After, the, after you fight, you're blown up. You're, you're not on fighting weight no more or shape. So, you know, I was blown up. The fight was coming in. And I had to fight right away. I had to turn around and fight right away, you know. And I had to lose, like, 12 pounds before I fought Alfonso Gomez. And the weigh-ins were, like, hours before the fight at that time. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't it wasn't a good time for me. I had to fight Alfonso Gomez, who can actually fight a little bit. It was only five rounds instead of like the ten or twelve I was used to fighting. So I had no time to to feel them out. I had to go right away, and I had no energy. So it is what it is. I I learned, and I didn't even want to come back when I lost that first fight because I knew I was like I was in trouble. I was like I'm not. I can't make this weight. It's hard for me to make this weight. I'm not in the shape I should be in. Um, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. So I think they kind of knew that, and they want they wanted me to back to to to, to beat me up a little more. But <laughs> then end up end up backfiring. Um, I started making it, and then I made it to the final. But I so but Juan, I got luck. So Juan, you were probably the youngest guy on the show, right? 
No, not not probably I was. <laughs> okay, so how how was that for you to come in there with all these experienced guys and older guys and and what was the experience like for you? It was crazy. Um, I came from fighting in Mexico. Like I was just always in. I started fighting at 15 as a pro in Mexico. So it was crazy. I mean, I got to learn a lot from them, which I I enjoyed from the, a lot of the older fighters. But just seeing the way they carried themselves around the house and. It was, I just felt it was a great experience for me being that young and getting to learn the game from these veterans. I mean, I think that's what helped me along in life, too, as well. Okay. Anthony Cooper, how was your experience on the show? Oh, I thought it was amazing. Uh, Jonathan Reed and I are both from the same town, so we uh, we went out there together, kind of, and we were, we were roommates out there. And, um, I mean, it was an amazing experience for me. And it opened up, because I got to share my faith on the show, so it opened up my wife and I. We, we have a television ministry that we do now so i've been preaching now for years and years on tv so it was, it was a great experience i loved it jonathan how was your experience on the show oh my experience was great man you know when i um first got there and they were introducing the fighters or the fighters were coming down in the uh in the gym you no know, i was like oh hell because my, my mind was you know, these people got to be kidding. I'm about to get this million dollars because I was thinking it was going to be a lot of inexperienced fighters trying to, you know, fight their way like some of these people have these tough man contests. I said, I'm about to eat these people alive. Then they start introducing folk. They introduced Peter Manfredo. I said, oh, hell, my ass got a little tight. Then they introduced Isha Smith. I said, I just saw that's when I'm going to fight on ESPN or, or that's when they had a uh, USA boxing then and they would show every Tuesday. I said, What in the hell have I got my ass into? So I mean it, it, it was good, man. If I if I had uh anything to do over, the main thing I would do over, you know, they, they had us fighting five rounds, so in a in a eight round or ten round or twelve round fight, you kinda you got a little time to feel somebody out, you're like, Oh yeah, well I'll I'll give them these two rounds and then I'll I'll take the rest. But you you give somebody two rounds in a five round fight. You you really got to go with it to win the rest of the rounds, man. But everything was good. If I had to do it over again, I would. Okay, Jimmy Lang, how was your experience on the show? Well, my my experience was 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 a a great life experience. Um, I think it was a it was a reality show that was completely unrealistic, as far as boxing goes. We were we were all completely out of our out of our norms, okay? Amen. Um, but we knew that coming in. That that was not a, it's not like we got there and thought something and another thing happened. We knew that. We knew it was going to be crazy. Um, but to Ishe's point, uh, I was a built up fighter. I was a, I was a, I was a fighter built up through good management, good matchmaking, things like that. Now you're dumped in this. I, I was a big fish in a, in a small pond. Also, you know. Now you're dumped in with these guys, and and there is no matchmaking. It's gonna fall the way it you know the way it falls. And I was I think I was over my head. I think I got much better after that, and and probably would have fared a lot better. But I was over my head. I think. Plus I you know plus I was nervous as shit. I mean I was very very. Uh, out of my element. Yeah, you weren't the only one. You can use, I mean, <laughs> use use whatever word you want. You could say scared. Goddamn right, I was scared shitless. You know, I've never been to California, and and I'm out there now. All of a sudden, Rocky standing right next to me. You know, <laughs> and and these guys, you know, these killers that I'm watching on ESPN, so on and so forth, that I happen to have the same or even better records than, but. You know, it, it it was it was an absolute golden experience for me in my lifetime. I'll never forget. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Tony. How was your experience? I mean, you're, you're kind of the same boat that Jimmy was in. You know, you're coming from a small town in Minnesota, and now you're out in LA on a TV show with guys that you've seen on TV and stuff. So, how was that? It was unbelievable at first when we all first walked in there. And I'd never been to L.A. I'm a, I'm a country boy redneck who shoots guns at animals and shit, you know. 
and get out there and I see Peter Manfredo, I see Jonathan Reed, Cooper, Jimmy Lang, Ishe Smith, you know, and like Peter said, we just fought like three months ago. I went 12 rounds with him. He won a title. And I, I mean, it was overwhelming at first, but being my age, my age helped me in this case. Cause I was 33. I was a little more experienced than some of them. Um, and it, it, it helped me to deal with it, but, I was still awestruck. I mean, we got to hang out with Sugar Ray Leonard and Sylvester Sloan every day, you know. And then when Peter and Alfonso went at it and everybody wanted to bring Peter back, I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. Don't do it because Peter <laughs> will come back and he will be in the finals. And I told them all. But, you know, it, it did it. And I wouldn't change it for the world. All these guys, you know, granted, I there was a little drama in there and I was out to be – out made out to kind of be a bad guy and that was fine it helped the ratings it helped the show and Ishe in the finale whooped my ass at caesar's Palace. <laughs> i mean he, i don't think i landed a punch <laughs> but afterwards Ishe and i became pretty good friends and we talked and i apologized for being a dick and uh Ishe, all these guys are great guys so <laughs> All right, Ishe. So let me let me uh, hear why your the hell, experience why the on hell the show. Did we bring? Why, why did we bring back Peter? Because we <laughs> we just saw twenty years later. Now you get it. What the <laughs> fucking? Why would we have done that? Who was the other guy we were gonna bring that that we could have brought back? It was it was me, man. Me and Peter was the first two to lose. Who's me? And who's the other guy? It was me. It was me and Peter. Peter left the house. I was like, God, dog, uh, what the hell is going on around well, everybody here? Was you know what I mean? It's it was, all good. Okay, if it was you, everybody was scared of you too. So maybe we. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, Ishe, let well, me shit, know your experience. No good. Let Let um, Ishe tell me about his experience on the show, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a special guest on for you guys. Well, you know, when I when I when I went to the show, like I said, the only ones that I had when I figured out who everybody was, the only ones that I knew uh, specifically was Peter. Then and then I had just sparred Sergio probably like a couple months earlier, and I had sparred Peter, so I figured they would be. And I knew Sergio from the amateurs as well, so I came in. Um, you know, I was like, like I said, I was like coming up in boxing, so I came in like a prick. I just, you know, I, I just thought, I, you know, I had so much bravado about the show. And, I mean, that's what every boxer has anyway. You know what I'm saying? You never want to think. I think, think we gonna, can all second yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so I came in, like, really high strong, really ready to go. I, I mean, I became close with Juan. I became close with Najee. Um, so I had I, I knew Alfonso Gomez because I had already had fought him young in my career, like my second or third fight. So I knew he was tough. Um, but I, you know, I came in, my experience was a little bit different because I had to adjust. I wasn't, you, it wasn't so much being around the guys. It was just, you know, dealing, you already go through so much cutting weight and, and dealing with, you know, the, the thing of boxing. And then now you got to be with these guys all the time and you got to do these stupid challenges and then you got to try to fight. You like, you go challenge and then you got to go fight. So I just had, so I was like, you know, you already grumpy from having to make weight. So I was just like real irritable like the whole time. And then, you know, like I said, fighting Sergio and then to figure out I lost by a split decision. And then, you know, when it's your first defeat ever, it's like, how the hell did I lose? Like I lost to this guy, you know, when you're on top of the world. So I never like got over that because I never seen the full unedited version of the fight. I just remember me hurting him at the very end of the fight. And Jimmy, uh, I think Jeremy Williams holding him up because he was actually hurt and I just never got over like it took me years to get over that that like like that first defeat and I think Peter can second that when you go to that show and you lose for the very first time in your career it sucks because you're trying to search for answers and I knew once I lost they was not going to bring <laughs> I knew I wasn't being brought back whatsoever so I mean my my experiences with them was good after the show I didn't get to experience what they were you know the fights and all of that because I had a little disagreement with the producers and the promoters. I just didn't, I wanted to get what I was worth and they wanted me to fight Jesse. I had no problems fighting Jesse. I was already, you know, I was maxed out at the weight. I was coming from 147, but they were going to pay him like way more. And I was like, you guys should just pay us the same, you know, take the extra 25,000 he's going to make. Cause I think I was making, uh, I think I was making 50 per the contract and he was going to make 75. So I was like, listen, 
take the extra 25 he's going to make and split it in half. Make him make 12 and a half, and I make 12 and a half. We both make, you know, 62,000. And they didn't, they did not want to do it. So I was like, the hell with this. I'm out of here. I had already given up so much to be on the show, um, like with the weight and all that. And I was already irritable, you know, with the whole experience at the end from the suffering, the first loss. But when you sit back and you uh, think about what we accomplished, what we did, and being recognized still sometimes to this day, you don't appreciate it until you get older and you get wiser. And, I, you know, it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it with none of, you know, I wouldn't trade that experience at all. These guys were great. I mean, we had our differences on the show. But like I said, you put us in a room that damn small. We're living together and having a fight. Of course, you're going to have your differences. But I love these guys. I was sad when I found out about Najee. I was sad when I found out about Jeff. You know, they're like my brothers. It was just a, a, it was a real tough time to lose those two guys. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to take a quick break. We got a special guest to bring on. I know all you guys know who this is. And uh, I have they no waited. idea who the guest is. Oh, you're <laughs> really gonna, you're, no, you're going to when they come on. But uh, when, when, this, when this person heard about the reunion, they definitely wanted to come on and make sure that they surprised all you guys. And uh, for the fans, you guys are going to remember who this is. And uh, she's wore many hats in boxing. But on this oh, show, oh, okay. she was the know. den mother, Jackie Cowan. How you doing, Jackie? Yeah. Hey. 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 Hi, guys. We love hey, Jackie. Jackie. Oh, Jackie. There's my guys. We love Jackie. Oh, my gosh. Isha, I hear you talking about being cranky on the show. And I went... Uh, yeah, I kind of remember a little bit of that. <laughs> remember that? Yeah, I was. Yeah, it was tough. I remember we, still look I great. remember, Isha, one day we went. What? I said, you still look great. You don't even look like I didn't you hear that. one bit. I said, you still look great. You oh have, my God. don't look like you've aged one bit. Thank you. Hey, guys, I'll be 78 soon, so thanks for that. Praise oh, my God. God. Oh, you don't look wow. that's for sure. Awesome. So That's Jackie, she's like, she's like so Jackie, she just so Jackie, tell me how you dealt with all these guys on the show. Well, I have to say, this was the nicest bunch of kids. They were kids to me. They're still kids to me. Look at them. Um, I loved every one of these guys, and I had a different connection to each one of them when they'd come in every morning to get weighed in, and and we would joke. I mean, Juan, I, I almost wouldn't recognize Juan De La Rosa. He looks so different now, all grown up. <laughs> yes, it's been 20 years. Of course, Jimmy Lang, I, I see Jimmy Lang and talk to him all the time. He's family. And uh, Ishe I run into. And and Ishe, it was just so funny to hear you talking about that, about being kind of uptight and cranky. I remember that they made me take you to church one day. We went to... Uh, <laughs> Right, I remember Baptist that. Church, now, not too far. Remember? Yeah, I remember that. Now I do. Yeah. They said. <laughs> they said, "Get that boy some religion. He will certainly calm down." So <laughs> I, it was actually really fun. I enjoyed going there. That was that was a great experience. And Anthony, my goodness, Tony, he was sort of the. the kind of the Romeo around the set. I won't uh, repeat some of the stuff that I heard, but he was quite the ladies' man, weren't you? <laughs> Must have been Cooper. No comment? <laughs> like me. Hey, you got to plead the fifth. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You you were all you were all pretty, pretty handsome and, and in your prime back then, and I know all the girls used to text me and call me and, and say, oh, is this one single? Is that one single? Of course, they found out pretty quick because they showed your families <laughs> and they figured out pretty quick who was available and who wasn't. But what a good looking bunch. We're still, really we, we're, we're still in our prime, though. We're still in our prime. You speak for yourself, each I, I know that. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan was always a character, funny, always cracking jokes. He was always in a good mood. I don't think I ever saw Jonathan Reed in a bad mood. Do you ever get in a bad mood? Yeah, I got in a bad mood. You know what I got in a bad mood? I got in a bad mood when I was back and I was looking at season two of The Contender. And I was like, man, they're letting these guys rest. 
you know, they tricked me to get in there and fight, uh, to fight Jimmy Lane. I mean, not Jimmy Lane, but to fight that knucklehead, uh, and, uh, Jesse. shit, what is the book? Jesse, Jesse Brinkley. Brinkley. Cause they had us, yeah. they, they had us, they had me running these bleachers and he was sitting on his ass. Cause one of our guys was already lost. I said, that's that. I said, it's going to, I told Brent, I said, man, that's going to be the who do who they want me to fight right there. I went up them bleachers seven out of eight times. Cause I came back down and, and, uh, one, it came back to where we had to stand when we ran back down the bleachers. And he's like, man, I can't make it. I said, well, you stay right here and rest, man. I'll go back up there. I knew if he ran up there, he wasn't going to make it. So I had to run up there. I, I talked I to like Jesse to know all the time. Many kids I talked to Jesse, too. You know, he's got the two older kids, and now he's got two younger kids. So he's you got that duck, but I want my rematch. Anthony, what are you been up to? Yeah, Anthony, you still look the same, Anthony Cooper. What are you up to? <laughs> my wife and I have a, a television ministry that we do. We've been uh, we've been on TV preaching for about oh, ten years. Wonderful, that's really wonderful. And Peter, I've seen you over the years, and your dad and the family. How many kids do you have? I got three, and my wife's got four. I'm the fourth. Good <laughs> that, that's true of every guy. He's always the kid in the family. And Jimmy, who I love and talk to all the time. I know what's going on with Jimmy. Jimmy's always doing something, staying busy. He's got always gorgeous hustle, kids hustle. and happy as can be. <laughs> the rest hustle. of you all have kids. Ishe, you yeah, got kids? But, yeah, you know I got a. I got six kids. Three kids. I got a, oh. They're all grown, man. They're grown now. Yeah. Well, my lord, Ishe. Hey, hey, hey hmm? stay hot to my boy real quick. He. Hey, hey, good. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? What's going on, man? Hi. I'm Sonny. Is that Sonny? Hey, Sonny. This is Sonny. Hi, Sonny. Hey. You remember me, Sonny? I was the one that we should be down in y'all's basement making noise. Yeah, that was that was you. He used to hold you, Sonny. All right. When he was when he was shit, oh, he wasn't even a year old. Oh gosh. Believe it or not, Jackie, I got three grandkids. And Juan, do you have kids? I got one, Who seventeen does? year old. <laughs> My God, son, you finally hit the right spot. And Tony, what have you got? What's that? How many kids? Well, I, I got two, but I got three grandkids as well now. Jeez. Congratulations. Well, I got yeah. five grandkids. I, I love five, it. I've got my oldest grandson's 27, lives with his girl. And then I have one that just graduated college. And then I have three younger ones, but we had so much fun with Sly oh, and and Ray. We did. And uh, you guys remember Prentice Bird and yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Frank yeah. How's he doing? Yeah, I, I still talk to Prentice. He's in L.A. And I talked mm -hmm. to, like I said, Tarek Salmasi. I talked to Jesse a lot. Jesse's got a pet pig. Did you guys know he's got a pet pig? That lives he's in the a house. Pet of pig. Pig. He's got, he just had two more kids too, Jesse. Me, me still me shooting. Yeah. Still shooting. We text each other every morning. Tarek, Tarek was the only one on the show that was older than you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Dead wrong. Uh, come, on. come on, come on. And does anyone stay in touch with Hollywood? No, no I don't. Know. I, don't know. Get in touch with I spoke to him one time on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in a He's where somewhere over in Europe, I'm sure, right? He, More than likely, me, yeah. He got me on the phone one time and kept me on the phone for like that he can talk, boy. <laughs> and so every he time I ever could. saw So every time I saw him, I kind of avoided a call because he got me for like two hours one night. And I was it was bad. So that was the only time I ever I ever talked to what him. What about Sergio? Anyone hear from Sergio? I hear from him here I and there. Just... Like I got his number here and there. I hear from him here and there. But I wish I had all your numbers because I send out morning texts every day. I got Anthony Frank Cooper's number. Um, I get Jesse's I get a morning number. text from Peter Manfredo every morning. An inspirational text. Yeah, I send I send it for, just to make sure my people wake up every day. I just want to make sure you wake up. If you want to read the inspirational message, then it's up to you. But I just want to make sure you wake up every day. Jackie, did you that, see that Sergio? Did you see that Sergio was just on my show two weeks ago? 
No. Did he talk yeah. about Gomez? Whatever happened to Gomez? Does anyone know? No, I was trying no. to get a hold of him. Um, I know he was having some tough times for a while, and uh, I don't know if he's out of them now or not, but oh. I know so Sergio Fonzie? came. Yeah, Sir, Sir, Sergio was on a couple weeks ago and because uh, he couldn't make the contender reunion, so – he had he came on and did the twenty random questions with me, and uh, but he he's just been busy with the zone and and stuff like that, commentating all the fights and and things like that. So, well, Guess listen, what, let guys, me uh, for those of you who don't know it, I just want to tell them something. I got inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame this year, guys. Oh, oh, Everybody knows it. Every that's much deserved, though. Big yeah, move. Well, you're all a part of my story. You're all part yeah. of it. Well, we're no, proud of you. you are aren't you mom. just aren't you just working on a movie or a documentary about boxing? Something to do with that, Jackie? That's I cool, just man. finished co-producing a movie in Florida, a boxing, a small, small little boxing movie. And right now I've got a company doing a documentary on my life. They've been working on it for a year and a half. So it was going to be done. But now that I'm going in the Hall of Fame, they want to wait till June and cover that. And that'll be the ending of the whole documentary. So I'm excited about that. And, of nice. course, the contenders are part of it. And lots of pictures of everybody and all the fun times we had. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So let me let me get to you guys' pro careers a little bit. I want to start with uh with Tony Basante. Um, so after you guys left the contender, um, talk to me about your your career a little bit and and some of the the bigger names that you faced or some of the funner fights that that you enjoyed. Uh, right afterwards, uh, I fought uh, a local guy in St. Paul, but it was a big fight. It was ten thousand people at the Target Center, in Minneapolis, and I fought Matt Vanda, and it was it was a great fight. <laughs> um, and whoever won that got to fight Duddy at the Garden, so I won the fight, and then I got to fight John Duddy um, at the Madison Square Garden. That was kind of cool. I got uh, Jake Lamata, uh, Frazier, and Jerry Cooney were ringside. And of course, I started bleeding like a stuck pig. But I start. I kept going for six more rounds, and they stopped the contest, and John won. Um, and then, well, of course, I had to fight Alan Green, and just got my ass handed to me on ESPN. He hit me with so many left hooks, I don't think I could see coming out of the airport. But uh, it was it was part of the deal. I got a lot of fights I wouldn't have got because of the contender, and you know, it it helped my career. Made a little bit of money, not a lot. Cause I wouldn't leave Minnesota, but uh, it was a great experience and uh, all these guys were a part of it and I'll never forget it. I mean, it, it was fantastic. I mean, who it was great. So I just want to say thank you to every one of those guys and including Jackie who was a den mother and she knows some stuff that she probably might not want to say right now about me. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Juan, talk to me about your career a little bit after the contender. Or, or any big guys you fought or, or anything? How you're nah, man, I kind of stayed under the radar. Just fought on local shows and wherever they got me, and that was it. Uh, started working at UPS and kind of fell off the radar after that. Just I lost to Mikel Williams. I won and lost again to him, and then I beat some undefeated guy from Germany, uh, Germany I believe. And then I, I uh, had a loss to, I can't remember his damn name, but I lost again. I was like, man, you know what? I don't have the time for this. I'm not dedicating myself. I'm not going to cheat myself. So I just hung them up. Okay. Ishe, talk to me about your career a little bit after the contender and about your world title. Uh, Well, it was up and down uh, for the most part. Like I said, you know, when I had that loss uh, on the show, it took me a while to bounce back and kind of find my footing. Um and then, you know, us boxers, we're very persistent. You know, we're going to pick ourselves up in any situation. So it just kept picking myself up. Then I finally got my shot um, in 2013 and and was able to cash in on that and become a champion and then defend. I, I fought some very tough guys, especially towards the end of my career. I fought some very tough fighters. Sometimes I, I should have won. Sometimes I the guys were the better guys. But, you know, when you're a true champion, you just don't make excuses. So I never make excuses. Some fights I thought I won later in my career. Some, obviously, I just fell a little short. But you know, we're uh, we're persistent uh, bunch, 
and um, pres- uh, resilient. So I don't have no regrets. And the, the contender was definitely a part of that. It, it brought me a fan base that um, I wouldn't have had going forward throughout my career. So for that, I'm always grateful for the fans and the experiences and meeting all these guys. Like I said, some of them I had already knew and um but most of them i didn't so it's always good to you know see some of them i follow on, I, I follow on facebook you know disappointing surges in here because me and him follow each other on um twitter so which is x now and i would have been nice to have him a part of it as well um because that's where his his career benefited the most off the show i think because it got him a title he was his story was after you just see everything his story was remarkable and then to go on that show so he probably owes a tremendous amount to them and what they did for him because he was relatively unknown before the show and i don't know if he gets the vernon forest fights in those fights without having to maneuver and uh you know fight tougher fights like me and peter had already been doing that we had already headlined a couple of shows and we're fighting tough fighters so it really paved the way for him and you know i'm proud of these guys it was good to be a part of them and, and be a part of them with the show and you know i remember one <laughs> on the show me what was it me you me you and naji once snuck out <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we snuck out we got tired of being like kate uh so we snuck out. Najee had this little spot that you could sneak out, and we snuck out, and we were just walking the streets, man. So it was always, it was always good to be, mm-hmm. a, you know, those memories that just never, never die down, man. It was a great experience. Too soon though, it okay. needed to come out like today, and we would all be multimillionaires. I'm telling you, it needed <laughs> to come out like today, like five years ago. Jimmy Lang, so talk to me about your career a little bit after the show. Oh, the contender put me in all those living rooms. And it, it was, a, it, what it enabled me to do is really build a, like a cult following in Virginia. You know, I was fighting five, six, 7,000 people on a, you know, maybe every two months I would, two, three months I would do that and really, really helped me and kind of put me on the map. I want a few what do they call it? regional not, not not world but uh you know like us national titles yeah na- i won a few of the three or four national titles and uh you know al- always entertain the people and and you know had a great career ended up with 39 wins uh had uh, another set of, when i was on the on the uh show i had three kids so i had another set of twins had another another marriage, another divorce, and uh, everything's beautiful. All right, Peter, talk to me a little bit about your career after the show. Oh, it was great. I mean, you know, like like these guys said, the show kind of gave me the exposure I needed that we were all looking for anyway. That's why we went on the show uh, to get the big fights that we got. And um, you know, I I fought one of the best fighters to ever put on a pair of gloves, and Joe Calzaghe went all the way to Wales to fight him. Um, in his home, in his backyard, and um, you know, I didn't have much of a shot. I mean, he kicked my ass. He, he blew me out of there, but um, at least I got I got to, to share the ring with him. Someone so great and legendary. Then I fought for the IBO title against Saki Obika, who was just way too big and strong. With my dad training me, and I just didn't think my my dad was a. We don't we don't really get along now, but I don't think he was a, a great trainer. Uh, he kind of got me killed in there when I when I boxed, and I kind of knew that. That's kind of why I left him and I went to Freddie. Um, and you've seen the difference in the second fight with me and Mora. It was just night and day. But um, I just, you know, uh, my career kind of took off after the show. It was a good thing. I won a world title, um, beating Angel Hernandez. And, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I only boxed to take care of my wife and my kids. And, and I got to do that with with boxing so i fulfill my dreams i still got out with some marbles left i mean i could spell my name still so that's a good thing and, um you know now i go to work i'm a laborer you know I, I work i go to boston every day it's an hour and a half commute every day to work i go to work with a smile i'm the first one there the last one to leave and um i just dedication i always have is because of me being a fighter you know i always show up I'm always there. If you need me to work overtime, I'm there. I'm always reliable. So I, 
uh, that's part of being a fighter. So, um, okay. Peter, wasn't like you an electrician for a while too? I was doing that because uh, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I know I, I never really wanted to be a fighter. I was I was forced to by my own man. You know what I mean? That was his dream, my mother and father's dream for me. You know because I think that was my father wanted you know to to be that, but he just didn't have the talent or the heart or the desire to do it. So he made his son do it, and um, you know so. That's what I always grew up doing. But then I would work like my uncles, his brothers would be electricians. So I said, I want to do something else. I want to, I got to make some money somehow. So I tried to do that a little bit. And then after I fought um, Saki Obika, he, he killed me. I said, I can't keep fighting, man. I got to do something. I need a job. So uh, a lady I knew, she's like, you should join the laborers union. They're always working, looking for workers, guys that show up on time. I says, all right, tell me, take me. So she took me to the office. He goes, yep, we, we can put you to work. So I started doing that. And then I found love with it. You know, and I just, okay. that's what I do. I'm a worker. Anthony Cooper, talk to me a little bit about your career after the show. Uh, I just had a couple of fights right afterwards. And then uh, then my wife and I really went into the ministry. And so we've, um, we've been preaching. We, we were involved in our church and we... I sang on a worship team for 15 years, did some music videos. Uh, we were on the radio a couple of times with a couple of songs we had and been preaching since. That's, that was okay. always your calling, man. That was, always, yeah. that, was, that was always your calling. It's good you're walking in your calling, man. Yeah. That's my brother. Hear. I text him. I text him every morning. Make sure. Me, I me and Peter stay in touch real, real go every morning. Every day. Every morning. That's my so, brother right there. I get those so Jonathan, I get those messages from Anthony every day. I appreciate that, Anthony. I'm gonna start getting I'm gonna hook up with you too, Manfredo. I like those inspirational speeches. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you, these are all my brothers, and then at the end of the day, these are all my family, you know. So I just want to make sure you wake up every day. I'm gonna get your number after the show. I tell right. everybody that the uh, the contender was my 16 weeks of fame. I right, look, I want you to meet my son. This is Jaden. What's up, man? How you doing? What's up, What's up, man? Man? A soccer player. Yeah, I was just about to Your say he looks, like, he looks like my son. He looks like a soccer player, man. Yeah, that's, that's like all he totally does soccer. Player. All right. Hey, Jonathan Reed, talk to me about your career a little bit after the show. Uh, uh, after the show, somebody got – it was a, a company that got in touch with me that was uh, – they're a missionary company, and they, uh, they, they had me on their show. Where we we would go to Honduras and we help build a, a hospital for the for the Hondurans in like a, a rural area where they didn't have a lot of uh, medical and things of that nature. Um, I had a couple of fights after the show. You know, I got beat up by Jimmy Lane, and then they wanted they they held my hand and, and, and take me to go get some steak or something. I think they set me up, but it's all good. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I call uh I call Jesse Brinkley every now and the, then. The and problem was he didn't tell him. The problem was he didn't know he was supposed to lose. My lord, son. And I tell you what. So so he kicked the shit out of me for about ten rounds before he got the message he was supposed to lose. My lord. <laughs> I went back to the corner and 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 uh I kept getting hit with something and my my coach was like, he said, man, your your left eye is closed. I said, oh, that's what he hit me with, and he uh. He told me he wasn't gonna let me go out for the next round. I said, "Man, it's only two more rounds." He said, "Man," he said, "I'm gonna stop it, man. You can't see out of that eye." I said, "Got to be more careful." Son of a gun, but it's all good, man. That was a good fight. Yes, sir. So, so let's talk about that real quick. Now, you guys just talked about your career a little bit. So let's let's give the fans what at, what are you guys doing in in retirement right now? I'll start with. With uh, Jonathan Reed. So, what what have you been doing since you've been retired, Jonathan? Oh, I'm a, huh, I'm 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 like one. I don't know if he still works there, but I'm at uh, I'm at UPS. You know, I, I, I work at UPS, and every now and again, some of the gyms around here want me to come and and uh, work with some of the kids that are in there. Some of the guys that are trying to box. If I don't hear every day. Do I have a gym or do I train people? Something wrong. So you you're, you're, a you're lot a of driver. People so you're a driver, Jonathan. 
Or do, are you at the? Are you inside? Oh, I'm inside. They want me to. They try and talk me into in, in, in going into management, but I don't. I don't want to be in the management, man. I like to go in there, load them boxes in the truck, go on about my business. Definitely. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I uh, after boxing, I, I started. I got into like a, I'm in a bowling league, so I'm in a bowling league uh, three days out of the week. Oh boy! So, so if any if any of you members don't think you can bowl, come get you some. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, maybe Jimmy Lang will give you a rematch in bowling. Well, that gummit, I'm coming. <laughs> you better watch it. You better watch it. I can't even lift the bowling ball now. My lord, so how's your dad doing? Your mom? He's good. They're hanging, man. They 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 fighting every day, baby. I know she got the same birthday as me. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I, I don't want to interrupt anybody, but I can't believe how beautiful Jackie Callen is, man. I just, just can't uh, stop no, that's what I told you, Seth. It's like, it's great. I, I can't you stop looking at her so beautiful. Oh, he was me. <laughs> you are oh, so beautiful. Thank yeah, you. watch out there now. That's it, my man. <laughs> Hey, real quick, I just wanna I wanna um, relay a message that just came up on my screen for you guys. Um, I hopefully I say his last name right, Ben Soli or Solly. He just said, "You guys introduced me to boxing. I wasn't good enough to fight, but you inspired me to train as a journalist and a reporting ringside um, was good enough for me. So thank you guys. So you guys got him interested in boxing, and he became a journalist." And uh, a reporter ringside because of you guys. So you want to thank you for that. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah, congratulations. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hear that a lot, and I love it. It's one of my favorite things when people talk about the contender. Oh, that was my introduction to boxing. I love that. That that's really makes me feel good. Yes, of course. Hey, I mean, I I watched it religiously too. So, and that's I'm honored right now to have all you guys on my podcast. This is like a dream come true. Because because I sat there like every other fan screaming at the TV, wanting certain fights on the show, wanted certain guys to win, wanted to know what was going on with the drama every week, couldn't wait for the next episode. And now I'm sitting here just bullshitting with all you guys and Jackie and everything. So, I mean, I just want to thank all you guys for taking time to come on my podcast so that we could do this 20-year reunion and just listen to you guys' stories and your experiences and give all this out to the fans. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so anyway, so Anthony uh, Cooper, so basically hard to believe it's too many years. I know, right? I know. And like they said, Jackie, you don't even look a day older. At all. Doesn't she looks great? So Anthony Cooper, so you basically I appreciate just been that. Those are my boys, they're gonna be nice today. <laughs> so Anthony Cooper, you've been basically focusing on your ministry then since you retired, right? Yeah, I do that, and then I'm also a high school basketball coach at one of the high schools here in town, and I, I do personal training. I train a couple of amateur fighters, and I do personal training as well. Okay. That's awesome, uh, and, man. Peter, and Peter Manfredo, what are you doing these days besides working as a laborer? That's it, man. I'm uh, working as a laborer. I'm trying to be a, a dad. I, I know I can't say the number one family man because that's already taken by Basati, but I'm trying, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to fill those shoes. You know what I mean, man? I'm home every day. Hey, uh, my, my, kids are, my kids are all older now. My my oldest daughter's 21. I got an 18 year old daughter, and then I my son's 16 now. He's got a girlfriend, so you know I just try to be around for them. You know I awesome. you, you got to teach by example. You got to teach by example. So whatever they see, that's what they're gonna. That's how they're gonna learn. So I try to be the best I could be. All right, Beautiful. Jimmy Lang, what are you doing now that uh, you're retired? I'm training. I'm I'm teaching fat ladies how to box. <laughs> I hope none of them watch this show. <laughs> and he about to lose some customers. <laughs> that was his one, right? He was he was teaching? <laughs> he, he was. Nah, I work. Uh, I work with the Redskins. I teach the Redskins how to box the uh, offensive line. So I I I go in there and work with them guys. And with the parallels from football to boxing and the footwork and the and the hand speed things like that, and and then yes, I I, I do I go to 
go to different people's houses and work the pads and, and kind of workshop box and not, and I'm not training anybody to be a fighter. Um, um, it's, you know, for health and, and weight loss and things like that. Also my, mm-hmm. my sons, uh, if you remember, I had twin boys on the show, They're both boxing, um, very, it, it's, I've been very careful to keep a, uh, an arm's length from them, you know, and, and just be their fan, you know, let them enjoy the sport, let them experience the sport. Um, not, Oh, this is going to, you're going to be a pro and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And we're going to move you and so on and so forth. So it's really nice to just be your son's fans. And that's what mm-hmm. I'm doing with them. I help them yeah. here and there. When they ask, they come to me, they ask me a question. They know, I know. So I have that trust, but I never, I never push myself on it on, 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 on that, you know, it's a better, it's a be- I'm telling you, it's a better way to be. <laughs> okay. He says, Smith, what have, what have you been up to since you retired? Well, I, well, once I, um, so I did uh bare knuckle, I think was my last thing I did in 2019. And uh, after that, you know, tra- you know, after the show, a couple, few years after the show, I think in 2008, I, me and my wife at the time, we divorced, but we had a great relationship with the kids, uh, sharing the kids, co-parenting and all that. Then she was murdered in Vegas, like just a random act of violence. So she just was mur- wrong place, wrong time. And then I ended up having full custody of the kids and still trying to fight. One thing about boxing mm-hmm. is, is that it's hard to really save your finances because you have so much money going out all the time. You got to pay your team. You got to take care of your family. You got to do this. You got to do that. I'm so, so when I retire, said that. Yeah, so you know, nobody tell it's so hard. People be like, You made this or you made that, and people don't don't really know. I'm so glad you said that. A lot of times that's gone before you get yeah, out of the ring. how fast that money goes, you pay your team, and then you half you try of it's to, gone and, before you even fight. <laughs> right. You try to invest money and then the investments may go bad, you know, something may happen. You try to get rental properties that you know, you just that's the kind of stuff happens. So after after boxing, when I lost their mother and you know, just the finances start, you know, coming in and you know, you need health insurance, you need benefits, you need retirement. I ended up started working for the post office. So I've been there now for about four years and I love it. You know, I have some money put the way I have insurance that my family actually needed from the tragedy from their mom the mental their mental health and their stability i can only uh you know i can't even imagine what it's like losing a parent especially that way so it was good for me to be able to say you know what put my pride aside and say you know what let me go and and better my family and take care of my family and and to go out i hadn't worked a job in 20 you know, 20 years. I hadn't worked a job since I was 17 years old. So it was a very different experience for me. So, you know, I've been there now a few years. I love it. And, you know, I still get recognized at work and on the streets. That's a little bit annoying, but, you know, it comes with the territory. But I wouldn't trade my experiences for the world, you know, being that I achieved the mountaintop, made it all the way to the top, and then having to work now in the private sector. I don't regret anything. I wouldn't change anything about my life or anything. I have no regrets. No, because that's okay. what makes you okay. a champion right there. Putting everything aside for your family. And that's that to me, that's a real champion. Amen. Hey Juan, so what have you been doing then since you retired? Getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess aging. Uh I work for UPS. I've been there 15 years. I'm a full time driver there. So I have health insurance stuff for my family. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm happy I did the show, learned so much from these guys from the financial side of boxing and saving my money and doing the right thing. So investing, I mean, I'm doing good for myself here where I'm at. So I have no complaints raising my son. He's gotten like five, six accepted letters to colleges, major colleges that I know I wouldn't have got into. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of him. That's it. Well, just you, of course you're, of course you're doing good. Y'all just got that new contract, man. Y'all just, y'all just got. Oh uh, yeah, new yeah, so yeah. And <laughs> yeah, making doing big money, good, but man, you doing yeah. real good. I'm, I'm blessed, man. Like I'm really blessed. I'm glad that I, 
put the boxing to the side to focus on what I did. And man, I mean, I made the right choice. So it, it, I'm good, man. I'm enjoying life. Praise God. Okay, Tony Congrats. Basante, um, tell me about what you've been doing since you retired. Uh, after I retired, I, I got into politics a little bit. I went, I got on the school board in Shakopee and in Crosby and, uh, I, I love that. I made differences for the kids and, um, my kids are older now. I got a 30 year old daughter. I got a 26 year old son. I've got three grandkids that are under a year old. Um, like I said, I drive truck for a living. I still hunt deer. I still go fishing. I ride motorcycle. Um, I, I, I enjoy life. I got a, a beautiful woman in my life right now. She's the one that set me up with all this stuff. She's a DJ for a radio station in Brainerd, Minnesota, and uh, she's just awesome. But I get to spend time with my kids now, and I, I, I look, I look back at all you guys now, and I, and how I was preaching, how I was did it all for my kids, and you know, it was all worth it because my kids are the most important thing in the world, and everybody knows how important being a dad is. And, you know, dad's not the easiest job in the world. Neither is a mom. Parents probably hardest job in the world you're ever going to have but it's the most rewarding job i've ever yes, had. especially yes, when they get older oh, when they get older. I, love it. I mean i love I seeing my grandkids i get to hold my grandkids all the time um i still i'm involved in boxing i coach an amateur boxing team in brainerd um we just had uh regional fights here a little bit ago and the passion's still there it's just i can't do it anymore <laughs> I don't know how you guys hang out at the gyms. I, that smell will make me back. Oh, I haven't been to a gym. It's oh, oh, awesome. Oh, oh. Yeah, I stay away from the gym. Everybody wants to spar and, and get in there. Like, nah, I'm sitting on the sideline. I love, I love it. it. It's awesome. And, John, hey, John I just want to say thanks for having us all together. This is fantastic. I'm going to friend request all you guys when I get on Facebook because I haven't talked to you for 20 freaking years. Yeah, we, we need to have a group text so we can get Peter's We do. Email. We really do. Text, man. Awesome. Peter's email. Peter's texting every day. Hey, Jackie, you need to get a show. Hey, no, somebody's, somebody's all right. Must have been just the internet because so many of us are on here. Sure. sure. Jackie, you, need, you, know, like I said, you guys are one of my brothers, so I want to keep in touch with you every day. And that's my way to do it. So listen, here's what we're gonna do then, because it seems like the internet's starting to affect the show and uh so we've been we've been on here for about an hour, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, the rest of the show has been really good. Um, I just saw, I just want to ask you guys one at a time just to, to give a shout out to your fans and, and and everything, and then we'll end the show and then we'll go off air. And you guys can exchange uh contact information if you want and all that once we're off the air. But uh, I'll just start with Tony Basante if you want to say anything to the fans that, that watched the contender and followed your career. I just want to say thanks to NBC, Stallone, Jack Callen, all the guys, Mark Burnett, that put the show on and gave us all this opportunity to be on live TV, on a major studio. And all these guys, you know, 20 years later, they all look fantastic, every damn one of them. So I wish you all the best, and God bless you all. Sir. Juan, go ahead and say the same Oh, man, I appreciate just the opportunity and getting to meet all these guys. I mean, great experience meeting Jackie, Sylvester, Sugar, all of them, the inspirational words we got every day. It's, like I said, it's just a blessing. Like, I found my faith through Anthony Cooper. So, I mean, it's a great thing to do. I mean, I'm just happy with life and happy the way everything turned out for me. So, got no complaints. All right, Isha. Well, I just want to thank these guys, you know, for, you know, being a part of uh, my career. Definitely being brothers on the show. Thanks to Jackie Kellen and everybody who was a part of the show, making sure I was selected. It was good seeing these guys, man. I can't believe it's been, you know, two decades since we've done this show. That's just crazy. We're all older now, gray hairs. It's just, it's good that we're, some of us are still here and, you know, praying for those that aren't here. But it, it was a pleasure, man. Thank you guys so much. All right, Jimmy Lang. To you guys, man, what a what a memory, what a, what a part, beautiful part of my life. Um, I'm fortunate. I, I believe it or not, I think of you every day, even if it's in the in the form of seeing the word contender somewhere. 
it, it it's just a beautiful memory in my life to the fans you're the reason we did it you're the you're you enabled us to do this okay because you loved boxing and we gave you a little picture into the lives of some uh, of of 16 fighters and i'll never forget it and i i love it my biggest fans my five uh kids and i'm their biggest fan i'm glad that that there's something for them to look back something tangible for them to look back on memories that are too old for them to to remember themselves you you guys are all a part of that so thank you all right jonathan reed yeah i just want to thank all the fans who uh paid attention to the show thank all the fans that they, they pay attention to me now. I mean, I'll be somewhere and every day I'll be pointing and looking. And then they ask me, were you Jonathan Reed? Were you on the contender? Uh, thank God. Uh, thank I want to thank all my brothers. You know, a lot of times, you know, you hear about boxing and you, you know, fighters can't get along, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these are all my brothers. If they, they, they call me, I'll be there in a second. You know what I mean? And uh, thank Miss Jackie for getting to keep, keep keeping us under that roof and, and, and keeping us straight. And keeping our mind focused on what what our job was to be doing. All right, Anthony Cooper. I just I want to say it was a life changing experience for me. I'm so thankful for the opportunity. Uh, everybody was a Rocky fan. I grew up a huge Rocky fan. Sugar Ray Leonard was my favorite fighter, and Jackie was just amazing to be on the show with. All these guys were great such an opportunity it, it truly changed changed my life it's so cool my kids watch this now he's you know so proud of it i'm, I'm very thankful for you all all right peter yeah just like what these guys touched on i just want to thank everybody all the fans because they're the reason we all did this for the fans uh besides our families you know we we all had to make money for somehow and that's what we did to for our family so um i just hopefully i did enough to to make my son proud of me one day where he, i mean he's he's 16 now he's got a girlfriend but i don't i don't ever want to see him take a punch so i did it so he never has to do it and i want him to look back at me and say you know what my my father was the man one day you know he did he did all this for me or for my family so um and i wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't get on that show, I don't think uh, that sh that that helped uh, my career. It helped spark my career. Uh, me and Jackie Callen, she was such a, a beautiful person, not not just outside but inside. Um, she she was there for all of us fighters, all sixteen of us. Um, so me and Rocky Sylvester Stallone, that was uh, a childhood dream to meet him. You know, I got to meet him. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, like I like they all said, is a living legend, one of the best fighters to ever do it. Got to meet him, got to sit down, got to talk with them, and I got all all uh, four, fifteen of these other guys. I got they're, they're my brothers now. Uh, two passed, but they're looking down on me. Energy never dies, so we got to go somewhere. So I'll I'll see them all again one day. But um. You know, they're all family now. Hopefully, I can. I, I text Anthony Cooper every day now. Jesse Brinkley, I haven't heard from him in a while, but I text him every day. Um, hopefully, I can get everybody else's number so I can keep in contact with them because to me, they're all family to me. So I just want to thank them too, as well. Yes, sir. Okay. And Jackie, Jackie, would you like to say something? Well, I'm just overwhelmed by this. I don't know if it's the internet or what. Twenty I can't years hear have gone anymore. by, and I look at these guys. I feel like it's only been a year, not twenty years. I look at these guys, and I have wonderful memories of each one of them. And it was one of the best times in my life. I've always been the only woman with a group of guys ever since I came into this sport. I've always been pretty much the only woman, and these guys made me feel so welcome and so absolutely comfortable and i love each and every one of them and i'm just so honored that you included me today so i could see them again and, and just tell them how much they all mean to me absolutely 
Well, listen, I just want to announce one more time to all the fans, if you're new to the Contender, guys, go check it out. It's on Amazon Prime, the first season. Um, I'm sure you can find the other four seasons after. They're on other different networks, but it's definitely a show worth watching. Um, like I said, look up all these guys after today on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Find some of their fights and watch some real, real contenders, man. Because a lot of boxing right now, it's just it's not good matchups, and and these guys all had successful careers and great fights. So I want to thank all you guys again for coming on, Jackie. Thank you, thank you for taking time to come on and say something to the guys. And uh, I'll never forget this podcast. I mean, to me, for a fan, this was a dream come true. This was my biggest podcast to have this many people on here at the same time and to have this many quality fighters. And one of the best boxing managers to ever do it out there. So I, I just, uh, I'm just overwhelmed, and I appreciate you guys taking time to come on my podcast. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Right. Bye, guys. Don't drop Bye. off. Don't, don't, God bless. Don't, don't drop off. Hold on, hold on. And the truth, and the truth has spoken. Has spoken.